Hello, everybody. Hi. Happy Friday. So great to see you. Thanks for hanging out with me today, or if you're watching on the replay, whatever day it is. Hello, everybody. Come on in. We're going to get started here in just a minute. Today, we're making the cute little bear applique. I was pointing the wrong way. <laughs> Picture of it is up in the top corner. Isn't that cute? There's a free one page printable template page down in the description box below if you want to grab that. In this series, we're doing all kinds of applique ideas, right? Uh, I'm going to show you here in just a second the previous two appliques that we've done in this series, and today we're doing the little teddy bear. Isn't that cute? Today I'm using some sort of brown colors uh, of fabric, but I had in mind, wouldn't it be cute to do all the different pieces of this bear in different fabrics? Sort of make them like a patchwork bear. Wouldn't that be so cute? Hi, everybody. Hello. Carla says, I'm planning on putting that on some baby bibs. Wouldn't that be super cute? It would. So yesterday we had some family come and visit. My Aunt Anne, my Aunt Faye, my Uncle Sonny, and my cousin Stacy. Y'all, Stacy brought me her medallion mystery quilt. I'm going to tell you, I was so super excited when I found out she was making that quilt with us. I get to quilt it. She dropped it off yesterday. I cannot wait. I have one quilt ahead of hers for Teresa. So as soon as I get Teresa's quilt quilted, I'm going to be quilting Stacy's medallion mystery quilt. <laughs> I am just so excited. All right, everybody. I'm kind of fighting a headache today. Hopefully it starts to go away. I took something right before the live. Hello, uh, I just want to thank my moderators today. Before we get started, thank you all so much for keeping an eye on the chat. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. I wish I could reach through the screen and give you a hug. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to go over to the cutting mat. We're going to take a look at the first two blocks we've done, right? Just to catch you up in case this is the first video in this series that you've seen yet, right? We did the baby carriage. Isn't that cute? We've done the baby duck, the rubber ducky, <laughs> right? Isn't that cute? And today we are doing the teddy bear applique. So this is the page that is down in the description box today. All right. And um, if you have a cutting machine, you know, last week I went through the whole process with you. I didn't pre-cut any of the pieces. And we did it all during the live using my scan and cut. Look how many pieces there are to this teddy bear. <laughs> so I've already pre-cut the pieces for today. The tracing template is free. But there is another link if you have a cutting machine and you want to get the SVG file for this teddy bear. There is a link for that down in the description box too. Yeah, Carla said drink lots of water. I'm, I'm trying to, Carla. Thanks for the reminder. Mm. Okay, so I already have my square cut, pre-cut, right? I like to cut my background, whatever I'm using for the background of my block, just a smidgen bigger than the actual block when it's done, right? So the applique that you download, this teddy bear is designed to fit in a finished 10 inch block, but you would start off with a 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch block, right? So what I did is I just traced my 10 and a half inch ruler and cut my fabric just a smidgen bigger in case there's any draw on that background fabric. Uh, my finished piece will be exactly 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Let me get this iron turned on and preheating because we're going to start laying out all of these pieces. There's quite a bit of pieces this week with this applique, right? And uh, in the top uh, left corner of this print off, you'll see an example and how everything sort of overlaps, right? Because we're gonna have a couple of different layers with this bear. 
So you have that diagram to go by when placing all of your applique pieces. I'm just going to set that right there. It's going to be sort of off the screen, but uh, you'll have yours in front of you, <laughs> right? And so here is our piece and we can start laying out all these pieces. You see I have everything pre-cut and ready to go. I have heat and bond light on the back side of all my applique pieces. And of course you could use whichever fusible you like the best. So I'm just going to start pulling out all of these pieces, right? And um, aren't these fabrics cute? This is actually a flannel. <laughs> this is not. You see, I like to work with all different types of different textures. You know, when you feel something, you can feel all the different feely parts of it, right? And I sort of have pre-layered some of my pieces. So the ears actually have two pieces, right? You could just do the one piece. That would be super cute, but there's a inner ear part too. And the let's not lose these eyes. I think my headache is <laughs> a hormonal thing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I've been super hot. Getting old is no joke. Let me just tell you. And I don't even say old. Getting older is no joke. <laughs> I like to keep it real with y'all. So there's all my pieces, right? Now this bear, when I'm going to start laying this out, I kind of want to center him in the block, right? But I'm going to start by sort of placing his feet first. Keep in mind, we're going to have a quarter inch. We're going to lose a quarter inch all the way around this block. So we want to just be mindful when we're placing our applique pieces, not to get too close to the edge because we don't want to cut off any parts of the applique. So I'm going to kind of just place the feet about there, right? And we're going to kind of start placing things according to that. That's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> so we have the feet there. The tummy of the bear is going to go over top of the feet. And we can just start adjusting things as we go like that. And then the head of the bear is going to go over top of the tummy like that. The ears, both parts of the bottom of the ears tuck up under the head like that. And the arms, the top part of the arm tucks up underneath of the head. like that and the like that sort of overlaps the tummy a little bit too so let me just see do I need to make any adjustments actually that's a really good placement let me just move these ears just a tiny bit more like that. And I'm going to take the eyes and the nose off and we'll do those here in just a minute. And the bear has a couple of buttons that go down his tummy. I think it would be super cute if you used actual buttons. Today I'm just using the fabric pieces. I think that's good. Let's go ahead and fuse that and then we'll do the nose and the eyes. Super cute. Now because of all of the pieces, right? Uh, I certainly think a beginner could do this block with this applique. I think it's a lot of pieces, so I would more so call this like an intermediate block. But if you are completely new to applique, 
I still say try it. It's certainly going to give you lots of stitching experience, right? It's going to give you lots of practice with all of the different pieces to sew down. Um, but yeah, because of the pieces, the number of pieces, I would say it's more like an intermediate. And now we can put all of the face details on. and his little buttons. Don't you think this would be super cute? Of course I thought about this after I had already pre-cut all of these pieces doing the patchwork bear <laughs> and all of the different pieces you know different fabrics for each of the pieces. I think that would be so cute. Uh, Sheila, this is a steam fast iron. That's a good little iron. I think I have a link for it in the description box. The empty nets. Pam says, uh, much prefer doing applique on the embroidery machine. Yes, if you have an embroidery machine and you are uh, sufficient with digitizing, right? Maybe you have um, like in Brilliance Stitch Artist 2 or something like that. Uh, lots and lots of people love doing their applique with the embroidery machine for sure. Okay, we're gonna let that cool off. I have some brown thread in my sewing machine in both the top and the bobbin. Unfortunately, I don't know that you're going to see the stitches on some of these pieces because I think the thread's going to blend right in. <laughs> Maybe I should have chosen like a black. Maybe that would have been easier to see during the live. Cheryl said, could you do a frog or a Christmas tree or a Santa Claus? I think I've done Christmas trees before, but let me write down the frog idea, Cheryl. We will see what we can do. Mary said, at the guild meeting last night, a member had a really cute bear, lots of scrappy bears. Yes, I bet it was cute. All right, this is just cooling off just a second. Cool it off, cool it off. <laughs> We're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I was thinking, why not mess up a good thing? We've been using the zigzag stitch on the previous two blocks. Let's go ahead and use that today. All right, we're gonna skip right over to the sewing machine. Yeah, isn't he cute? I think that's just so cute. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Hold on, let's back up. This headache is just throwing me for a loop. I forgot to show you what this would look like as a quilt. I uploaded the pictures. Carla said, are there little white specks on the, uh, yes. There's little white specks on that fabric. Let me show you this. Since I uploaded it and everything. <laughs> Wouldn't that be super cute? Even if you did the bears in all different colors. That would be adorable. So that's just this bear applique repeated on several blocks and put together as a little quilt. <clears throat> Hi everybody coming in. And then if you took this bear and you matched it with the other two appliques we've done. I call this pretend quilt ducks in a row. <laughs> I feel like all my ducks are not in a row today. <laughs> it's 
So wouldn't that be super cute, right? And this is kind of my idea in this whole series to just give you an arsenal of appliques to have on hand. So if you had a quilt, you could take one or you could take two or you could take multiple and do them as a quilt, right? Super cute. All right, I think my, um, my applique whoops there we go I think it's cooled off and we can move over to the sewing machine there we go let's pick a zigzag stitch let me cut off a little scrap of fabric because y'all know I like to uh, test my stitches before I actually start stitching on my stuff Deborah said a Highland cow I wonder, Deborah, is that you that has mentioned that before over on Facebook? I know someone has asked before for that. I just wrote it down so I don't forget. We'll see what we can do. All right, so I have a scrap piece of fabric and I'm gonna choose a zigzag stitch. That stitch seems to go pretty quickly too, right? And uh, let's just start stitching. I'll tell you the stitch that I'm going to go with here in just a second. Could you do a bright yellow? Cheryl, are you asking me with the bear? You could choose any colors you wanted to. You know what? Oh, I think it's okay. You could choose any colors you wanted to. Oh, you mean the thread? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> All right, that's big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I like to kind of show you. There we go right there I think that looks good so we're gonna go with that for right now so I'm using a zigzag stitch the stitch length is 0.9 and the stitch width is 2.8 oh Eileen said a little turtle all right y'all hold off on giving me recommendations because I'm not going to be able to see them here in a second and I don't want to miss them a turtle I wrote that one down okay All right, we have several different layers going on here, right? I usually like to start on the bottom layers. Uh, and I don't know that there's a right place or a wrong place to start with this when you have so many different pieces, right? But I'm going to pick one of the pieces that's on the very most bottom. And uh, let's go ahead and start with one of the legs. The legs tuck up underneath the arm and the belly. I even have a small little tiny gap there. It's hard to see on the camera. Tiny little small piece of the leg there. I probably am not even going to worry about that little gap. Now the gap over here is a little bit bigger and I probably will stitch that little piece. <laughs> Beverly said the ducks won on the tic-tac-toe quilt. <laughs> they did. <laughs> That's a good name for that quilt. All right, so I'm going to start right here right where this leg pops out from underneath of that arm. I'm almost wondering, there we go. I think that might be a little bit better. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start stitching. Just, uh, just know that when I'm over here sewing, I don't so much see the comments. So if you have a question for me, you might want to hold off for just a, a few minutes, okay? I'm going to try to remember that I have my knee lift plugged in today. <laughs> I 
I'm wondering, is that bright enough on the screen for y'all? Yep, that thread's just going to blend right on in there. So while it's super cute in person, <laughs> it's not the greatest thread for demonstrating during a live video. All right, I'm right at the edge of the tummy. I'm just going to break the thread. It's actually going to tie a knot on the back. If you're jumping around, you might want to manually tie off your threads if you don't have a, th uh, a thread cutter that ties knots on the back, right? I'm going to jump right over here, and we're going to do this leg next. If you choose to do a satin stitch, you probably most definitely want to have that stabilizer underneath. So we have the two little legs sewn down. I think next, see the arms go over top of the tummy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and sew down the tummy. Oh, I have that little gap right there. It's much bigger than the gap over here. Let's go ahead and stitch that because I don't want to forget that. Now just know with my sewing machine, I have a Juki HZL F600. And like when I start sewing with the zigzag stitch, you'll notice that the machine or the needle goes up and down a couple of times before it starts. And that's actually locking my stitch in place. But if your machine doesn't do that, then you'll probably, when you're starting this stitch, want to take a couple of stitches and then do a back stitch just to lock everything in place, right? All right, that was the tiny little gap. Now we're gonna move to the tummy. I'm not sure if you can tell just by looking at the fabrics or not. The flannel has a really great feeling to it. And I love mixing the flannel with just regular uh, like quilting cotton. Just changing up the textures of the fabric. All right, let me cut these little start stitches. And I realize that this thread is just disappearing and it's hard for you to see. All right, we're gonna go next to the arms, right? The arms overlap the belly, but they're also tucked up underneath the head. So let's go ahead and stitch those.
so there's the first one we're going to move over to the next one All right, so all of the limbs of the bear are sewn down. Uh, let's move up to the ears. The ears tuck up underneath of the head. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the larger part of the ear first and then the inner ear. y'all hear my bird <laughs> he's calling mom 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 So there's the outer ear and we're going to move right in and do the inner ear. Moving right along, we're going to move over and do the other ear, the outside portion of the ear first. That flannel didn't fuse down very well. I don't think I did it long enough. <laughs> See me reach for the back? I still have not quilted my mystery medallion quilt. Maybe after I do Stacy's, I'll throw mine on there and get it quilted. <laughs> you know, we finished that quilt top up right before I shut down to move. So mine is still waiting to be quilted. Our ears are stitched down. Where's my little clips? I'm going to clip off all of these little threads. And now we have everything sewn down that tucks up underneath of the head. So I'm going to go ahead and sew down uh, the head next, right? 
I'm just going to pick a spot and go. notice anytime I stop I go to do any like real hard turns with the block I stop right I just find my stitches are much smoother looking and cleaner looking if I stop and turn Right here is where we started, right there. And with this very same zigzag stitch, I'm gonna stitch down, what is that part of the bear called? The nuzzle? <laughs> I, I don't know what that's called. <laughs> that's what we're going to stitch down next. And then I think I'm going to make my zigzag stitch quite a bit smaller to do the buttons, the nose, and the eyes. do think see how quickly we're moving along right and I'm pausing and chit-chatting a little bit but it really doesn't take a whole bunch of time especially if you use a stitch like a zigzag stitch to stitch everything down to make one of these bare blocks The thread blends in so much that I'm having a hard time seeing the thread. <laughs> so there's that. Now I do want to make my zigzag stitch quite a bit smaller. So let's just test some different settings. Too small, Lisa, too small. <laughs> Feeling indecisive today. All right. See the progression? This is the stitch we used for all of the bigger parts, right? And this is the stitch which is quite smaller, right? So these settings, the stitch width is a 2.0 
and 0.7 for the length, right? So let's just jump in here and we're gonna stitch down the eyes. because I'm turning this piece to the right as I work around the eye, I'm making sure that my needle is in the right hand position right next to the applique when I turn. See, I think that's super cute. A little bit hard to see. I want to cut that little thread right there. Then I'm going to move right down to the bear's nose. I certainly think that you could put on your free motion foot and speed up the smaller details of this applique and just do a straight stitch, you know, free motion stitch. That would speed up the process of doing all of the little details of this bear. I do think bears have snouts. Oh, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> um, I do think when I bring this block over to the cutting mat, you know, I have the natural light coming in that window. You might be able to see my stitches today a little bit over there just because of the thread color I chose. He has a snout. That's good to know. A lot of the times I like using threads that contrast against my fabrics that I'm using for applique. So it kind of becomes like another element of design, right? The stitches sort of just stand out as, you know, another feature of the block. And sometimes I like to coordinate my threads so that they kind of blend in. But what I was thinking is if you did like a patchwork bear 
where all of the different pieces are different fabrics, which would be adorable. You could do a thread that just really stands out and do different stitches for each one of the different parts, right? You could do a blanket stitch on his arms, a satin stitch around his belly, a zigzag stitch around his head or her head, whatever. And, uh, you know, go through and pick different decorative stitches in your machine to stitch down all of the different parts. And I think that that would be adorable. And we are on the last button. you Emily yes I have this headache oh my goodness isn't that cute let's come over here and maybe maybe not <laughs> you might be able to see the stitches no not really <laughs> I'm gonna hold it up to the camera see that you can just see it this thread just really blends in now in person I can definitely see it um, But yep, with my block, for sure, the teddy bear and the fabrics are the focus, right? Um, so yeah, and I think that went by relatively quick, right? Like I was just really taking my time. I wasn't rushing through it. Um, I can certainly sew applique much faster than that when I'm doing like a demonstration in a, in a live. I like to really just sort of take my time so I think you could stitch this bear out a lot faster, especially if you have some experience. But um, that really just didn't take that long, did it? Cheryl said, what was your first stitch length and width. Cheryl, you're going to have to come back to the replay and find out. <laughs> I do not remember and I didn't write it down. <laughs> You'll have to come back to the replay and I'll say it again. <laughs> I didn't write it down and I certainly have no short-term memory when it comes to stuff like that. So yeah, this is super cute. So all I really have left to do, right, is I could give this a quick little press. And then I would just use my 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch ruler and square this block up, right, and get rid of all the extra. We'll give my iron just a second for it to warm back up. I really do like the zigzag stitch though. Uh, because there's not a lot of pulling. Like you can see a little bit of rippling right through uh, there and maybe a tiny bit around the ears, but there, it's not a lot of draw on that background fabric. It's a very relaxed stitch. And it's great if you don't want to use a stabilizer on the back side, right? <laughs> yeah, and so that just really kind of pressed out. Chris said, uh, I wasn't here at the beginning. How will you use the finished piece? Well, really, Chris, this is just an idea for you to use in your quilt, right? So this is the third block that we've done. We've done the baby carriage and the uh, little baby duck. Here's a teddy bear. You could sew this into a pillow. You could make this into a quilt, right? 
you could reduce the size of the PDF and someone mentioned that they're going to sew it on some baby bibs, right? You could put this on a t-shirt. There's, you could buy a pre-made baby blanket or like, um, what's the thin little blanket, receiving blankets, right? Let's say you have a baby shower coming up this weekend. You could go to the store and get a pre-made receiving blanket and put this on that just the one single bear and customize that blanket as a gift so it's all kinds of things you could do with it right Beverly said Lisa I think he should have dots in his eyes well most certainly you could add dots to the eyes for sure Ella said the zigzag and the blanket stitch are probably her favorite. Patsy said, Lisa, you went faster than me. I'm still working on the buttons. <laughs> oh, I love you too. Thank you. Jacqueline said, I think you could do table toppers. Wouldn't that be so cute for like a baby shower? And then they can keep the table topper at the end. That would be adorable. Right? You could do it in the nursery colors. Yeah, lots of different ideas. Um, so the cool thing, you know, the template, if you were just to print it out just like this, these templates make up a 10 inch finished block, right? But if you adjust the size of the print settings in your, in your printer, when you're printing it, you could make this really as big or as small as you want it. And use it for all kinds of stuff. There's lots of pieces to this bear. <laughs> Last week was a lot more simple. Y'all are so welcome. I've had fun looking at all of your blocks over on the creative crew. And while I don't comment on everything because I'm just so busy, and then I don't want to feel like, you know, if I comment on some. And then I don't see, you know, I don't see others for a day or two or I don't comment on them. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But just letting y'all know, I see each and every one of your pictures. <laughs> I think it's even super cute. I have a husband and wife team and they both make a block each week. They've been following along for quite some time now. So they do, they each do their own version of the block every week. I think that's awesome. Y'all are so welcome. Thank y'all for following along and hanging out. Even if you don't ever plan on making this block, right? Maybe applique is the last thing you ever want to do. Like your thing is paper piecing, right? <laughs> Maybe that's your thing. And you just don't care for applique, but you're still hanging out with us. Thank you. But yeah. Applique is one of my most favorite quilting techniques. I've always loved applique. Even when I first began years and years and years ago, it was my favorite thing to do. So super cute. If you lined them up like this, wouldn't that be cute? We're going to pretend like I'm squaring this up. I'm not going to square it up today. <laughs> but yeah, put a little sashing in between. Of course, they're not all going to fit in the camera right but just to give you an idea so if we do one more baby block right here wouldn't that be a super cute little table topper right I think it would be let's do one more week of baby applique and then maybe we'll move on to like some just animals Super, super cute. Actually, all of these blocks really go together. <laughs> don't they? Maybe I should coordinate whatever fabrics I'm using next week. 
and then I'll have a set of four that I can do something with. See the blue and the blue dots? That wasn't planned, but it kind of really goes together. <laughs> so yep, there's the baby, baby bear. Now if you have a cutting machine and you want to get the cut file, the link is in the description box for that too. A swan, I'll write that down. I don't know that we're gonna do all of all of these things. When I start drawing stuff, it really depends on how easy it is for me to draw stuff out <laughs> as to what we'll do and what we, um, you know, cause I don't wanna make anything too, too complicated. But uh, a baby giraffe. I still have ideas from like two lives ago. <laughs> Oh, Sheila said maybe something in green next week. Yeah, we'll have to see. A dog or a cat. A pacifier. I have that one written down. I have the bottle written down. I wrote down the idea for the frog. A chicky. That would be cute. I did a quick little video of my chickens before we started today. Because they're just growing up so fast. I'm going to try to repost it. But I took it's only a minute and 12 seconds long, the little video. Right? I was getting, for the li getting ready for the live. And they were just right out here in front of my studio so I took a little video and then I tried to post it on Facebook and it was not loading and I was like I bet you my internet is out so then I went and did a speed test and of course my upload speed was a 2 when usually it's like 60 so I was like oh no not before the live so I went and I reset the modem and that fixed it <laughs> And, uh, but my video hasn't posted, but I'm going to post a video, all that to say, I'm going to post a little video of my baby chickens. They're not so much babies anymore. I would call them teenagers. They're not fully grown, but they're not little baby chicks anymore, but they're so cute. Pat said, you need a pig. A big applique or I need a pig here at my house. <laughs> I think with the chickens and the cats and the cockatoo, we have enough responsibilities. <laughs> I think that's a lot to deal with every day. And like what Harlan's getting ready to go. Uh, I think he wants to go to Vermont before our regular trip, like in October. I think he's going to go up. And then he has a work travel trip to go on. And I'm like, you know, you're getting all these animals. And who's going to take care of them while you're gone? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I don't know that we need a pig here at my house. But I wrote down pig for applique idea. Mary Beth, he's around the house. I can hear him, but he's very faint. So they make several trips around the house throughout the day. And uh, I can hear him, but he's on the other side of the house, so you probably can't hear him. Mimsy said, what does uh, your shirt say? It says, don't rush me. I'm waiting for the last minute. <laughs> that is my new... Uh, my new motto in life. I'm not rushing to do anything here lately. Do you know what I'm really good at doing here lately? Dilly dallying. <laughs> That's what I'm really good at doing here lately. Jane said, can we see your bird? 
Uh, I have a video where I show popcorn. I'm actually holding him several years ago at the house before the last house. Um, but yeah, he's unpredictable. So I'm not going to just go pull him out of the cage and bring him in here. Because who knows, he's going to start flying everywhere. He said, I am a putter offer. Yeah. We could be sisters. <laughs> Scrunchin said, uh, you're always so mellow. We appreciate it. I am pretty much pretty mellow. Um, since we moved to this house, I've really just tried changing like my whole attitude, my whole view on life. I've really tried to change. Um, at the previous house, that house just in general was very stressful for me. And then my workload was also very stressful. So while it may not have come through, you might not have seen it during a live because I'm very good at like hiding stuff <laughs> like or just dealing, you know. Uh, but I was really stressed out there. So when we were painting this house and getting ready to move in i just sort of took on the thought process that i'm gonna make my life a little bit more chill <laughs> do you know what i'm saying life is too short and i am just um i really want to just relax more do you know what i'm saying i was really just to be honest with you, I was pretty much on the on the verge of a nervous breakdown before the move. And while you might not have noticed in the video, that's where I was. And I don't want to go back there. <laughs> so, yeah. How old is Popcorn? She said, uh, he's 13. He's 13 years old. We've had him since he was six months old. So we've had him pretty much his entire life. Yep, life got, it just goes by so fast, doesn't it? It really does. Like every day on purpose, I'm trying to just pick some times throughout my day just to stop, <laughs> you know, um, and I'm one of those kinds of people, you know, I, th I do this as a business, not just stream live, right? Uh, but design patterns, make quilts on commission, I quilt people's quilts. Um, I do sublimation work, right? All of that as part of my business. I was working so much. I just had to really slow down, <laughs> right? And I think slowing down makes me a much more fun person to be around outside of what I'm doing too, right? <laughs> So yeah, I'm trying to have more days like yesterday, like my family came to visit yesterday and it was so awesome. And then we went to lunch after and that was awesome. Do you think before we moved, like I would have just taken off in the middle of the day and gone to have lunch? <laughs> no, I had, I was just like work, 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 work and uh, taking off during a weekday to go have lunch. Nope. But yes, I'm going to do more of that. Yeah, Evelyn said, you need to smell the roses once in a while. Absolutely. Hello, Miss Jane. I was thinking about you, Jane. I hope that you're home safe and sound from your travels. All right, y'all. 
Well, Sheila said that's a perk of being your own boss. It's a perk and it's a downfall. It's like, um, there's this line in the middle, Sheila, <laughs> right? Working for yourself, um, there's this line. You know, nothing's going to get done if you don't do it, right? So I'm over here on this side of the line. Everything has to be done. I'm the one to do it. But then you have the rest of your life over here, right? <laughs> so there's this balance. And I've always been where I, I tend to be on one side or the other. Like I'm doing nothing or I'm just doing too much. And so here I've kind of just tried to be more disciplined about finding the middle ground, right? Finding a good balance. Mary, I think you're right. Jean said, uh, does being nosy, do you and your parents eat evening meals together? Do any of your family help with your parents? So my parents are pretty independent, right? At the other house, the living situation was completely different and we all shared a kitchen. So every night, um, we shared a meal right because have you ever tried cooking separate meals in the same kitchen the same time someone else does that doesn't work <laughs> right but they're still really independent and so us having our own kitchens is wonderful we get together like once a week and we'll either go to their house right their section of the house and eat dinner or they'll come over to our section of the house and eat dinner but primarily the rest of the week, we're independent doing our own things at this house. That just wasn't really so much an option at the other house. It wasn't set up where it was conducive to do that. So we ate dinners together every night. But they're still very independent and they like their own stuff and we like our own stuff and all of our favorite stuff we save for the nights that we do dinner together. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice that they're they're here though, right? It feels good to know that, you know, one day when they do need assistance, they'll be right there. Right now, they're doing, you know, we go over, we walk next door, next door, we walk through the door, <laughs> and we visit, you know. Um, okay, y'all, I think I'm going to go have some lunch, and I might actually lay down. Do you think I would ever say that? before but I feel like this headache is not going to go away unless I do it's one of those kinds of headaches and I can feel it have you ever had a migraine it almost feels like I have a migraine coming on that's not a good thing I cannot stand a migraine and it's coming into the weekend, too. But, yep, that's what it feels like. All right, everybody. Before I head off to lunch, I'm going to try to upload a video of my little chickens again to Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, if you do Facebook, uh, you might want to check out my Facebook page later today and see how fast my chickens are growing. I hope you get this block, even if you're not making it now. Save it in a file, right? <laughs> and uh, you'll have it in case you ever need it. Who knows what we're doing next week? I have a couple of things I've already started on, and I have lots and lots of ideas. So thank y'all so much for sharing. Thank you to my moderators. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. Hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next Friday, okay? Migraines are awful. I feel it like on this side of my head. Horrible. Okay, everybody.